Welcome to the Inner Princess Course Guide to Taurus Trap Hard Part 2. In this video we'll continue on from part 1, this time looking at the back 9 holes. This is an incredibly well thought out course and the back 9 requires a blend of good decision making and raw skill in order to succeed. The course builds to probably the most notorious 18th hole in the game, which of course we'll come to at the end of the video. Be sure to leave a like if you find this video helpful for your round and share it if you want to help someone else's. So let's begin by looking at hole 10, which can be described as a bravery hole. The more you risk, the more you can gain, but overdo it and you'll go out of bounds. Your aim is to get the ball from the tee to the green via a spiral, but this time the spiral itself runs flat to the ground. You'll need to try to generate enough power to carry your ball all the way around, and getting this right can bring you close to the hole for a birdie too. The low perimeter walls add considerable risk and it's easy to hop out of bounds if you overhit or catch an unlucky bounce. If you underhit, you won't be left with a direct route to the hole, so you have to chance your luck at going in off a deflection using either the flat side walls or the jagged rocks. Get this killer shot right coming out of the cave and you'll be doing just fine. Sorry, couldn't resist that one. Hole 11 brings us a tee shot based almost entirely on skill. The valleyed path to the green is blocked by two wooden planks, and as there's no direct path through, you'll have to jump at least one. The safest and strongest route is to clear the first and aim for the one foot gap to the left of the second. You don't need much pace to clear the jump, and getting this right should rebound your ball off the back wall and towards the hole. If you happen to miss your first shot and leave your ball stuck in a rut, you can still hole out for birdie by rebounding off the left side and curving your ball in. So providing you don't go out of bounds, you should at least see a safe par. Hole 12 begins our descent to sea level, and our first step features a return of the tunnels. This time the flag is positioned in the closest green and there are only two tunnels to take you down. Overhitting your first shot will send your ball down the furthest tunnel and leave you without a direct shot for two. But credit to Stu1701 for hitting it in a tournament recently. You should aim to lay up for a shot at par from here though. Play at a pace to just roll your ball off the top ledge and you'll make your way down the first tunnel to the green and hopefully out in a straightforward two. If there's one piece of advice I can give you at this stage in your round, it's to wash your balls and fortunately hole 13 is likely to do that for you. Your route across the flowing water is the same banked curve as seen in the easy course, but this time with the outer guard wall removed. To get onto the green you need to stay clear of this edge and have your ball come to rest at least 50% of the way around the curve in order to be carried the remaining distance. To hit this, you're best off aiming for the line tight to the inner wall and think only about staying just short of the outer edge. Once on the green, you have a medium length putt which will still need your full focus to hit and as a par 4 there's a very real chance to gain some strokes here. That said, it is one of the hardest holes in the game and so there's a very real chance to lose shots too. If you do come up short, you'll be forced to watch your ball slowly and regrettably return to you and onwards out of bounds. And this will give you plenty of time to re-evaluate the life choices which led you to this moment. The alternative route, first shared by DVC2112, is to play off the two rocks straddling the waterfall. Hitting this has a chance of landing the hole in one, but is not recommended for competition. Get on with this route and you'll likely be so pleased with yourself that you'll inevitably miss the second shot anyway. For hole 14 we return to the shipwreck which carried our pirate tourists to their ultimate end on the island, as their ship was brought down by just 18 holes. This time playing through the centre of the ship is not so straightforward with two large boulders obstructing the route. Initially you may think to jump the first rock completely, but doing so leaves enough energy in the ball to create uncontrolled chaos at the back of the green and probably send you out of bounds. Your better route is to bounce in front of and over the first stone, through the gap to the right of the second and onto the green for a shot at the eagle. This will leave a still challenging length putt, but it should be a good 50 percenter. If you happen to miss your line on the tee shot, you'll likely take a deflection off to the right and there's very little protection here, so take your time to line it up carefully. Hole 15 is one of the few flat holes to feature on this course, and the green is a snaking reverse S shape around lost treasure, rocks and anchors. As a par 4, you are given the option to take the safe route one putt at a time, which will eventually lead you to the hole for par without much risk or difficulty. But the beauty of this hole is that you have an extra two tiers of risk that you can take to improve on that. 
The first involves taking the straight line apex shortcut of the first two curves, effectively saving you one shot in the sequence and all but guaranteeing the birdie. The obvious risk here is that if you get it wrong, right or left, you're going into the sand. To try for the eagle you have a much higher risk shot, which involves aiming for a small but neatly carved out area on the rock directly ahead of you. If you hit this with just the right weight, you should take one cheeky bounce in the sand before launching onto the green within range of the cup for your eagle too. Nail this and you'll be the Charlie Big Potatoes of your round and everyone will find you 15% more attractive. We now start our final climb to the climax and the first hole on our path is number 16. This is one of the holes that quite specifically doesn't offer any great choice of line and weight and is entirely down to skill. With the hole straight ahead of you and sitting on top of a mound, your play is to keep it straight and judge the weight. Ideally, you'll be within range on both these counts and either land the hole in one or at least stay on top for a tap in birdie. Getting both wrong will leave you with a trickier second putt, but providing you keep your cool, this is still very sinkable. Our penultimate hole is the same banked curve featured on the easy course, only this time we have a narrower path over the bridge and it takes away a lot of much needed margin for error. To avoid dropping into the water you will need to take the inside line and give your ball a confident hit. I see more players under hit this than over hit. If you get on the green you should have a sure in for two and at a par three this will net you a shot off your score. Keep in mind though that getting over the bridge isn't always enough as you may still end up delivered to the concrete green surround and time out as your ball rolls away. So here we are at hole 18, the moment of truth for your round, the do or die hole which can gain you four strokes or lose you many many more. As with the easy course, your challenge is to make it from the highest point on the course to the lowest point in as few shots as possible. You're offered two routes down, a seemingly straightforward route down flights of stairs eventually leading to the flag, or the cliff dive straight to the green. I'm going to state my conclusion first, which is to say that you need to go off the cliff edge, and now I'll cover why. The stairs might seem like an easy option, but they are littered with quirks and abnormalities which you may not notice until it's too late. The stairs are uneven, there are chunks missing, the angle play is against you, there are no backs to the steps, at best they are tilted flat, and at worst they are tilted backwards. If you were to walk up these steps you would trip, so the random chaos you subject your ball to is likely to end badly. This is truly a trap for tourists, and the locals know better. So, to the cliff. Believe it or not, this is an easier shot on the hard course than on the easy version. The hut is gone from beneath you, you have a map to soften your first bounce, and as mentioned before, the steps are angled backwards to further apply the brakes. Pay attention to the angles of the rock route to the edge, as these will direct and deflect your ball depending on the pace you hit it. I aim for the join here and give it a medium push forwards. With the right hop and skip, you'll be on your way down and bouncing to the green. From here, providing you've stayed in bounds, you should be confident in sinking your next putt, which could be a whopping four under par. I therefore implore you to practice this shot until you've comfortably got the feel for it, as you'll want this hole to be your strength and not your weakness. That concludes the guide for Taurus Trap Hard. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and picked up a few pointers for your game. As ever, please do leave a like or comment if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and share with anyone who you think needs to see this. The link to join the Walkabout Discord is in the description, as is the Facebook group if that's your preferred platform. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.